first off, I'd like to honor the people at the Boston Marathon who died or remained or injured. You can hear that horrible air conditioner in the background. I really wish the Lord Jesus would fix that for me. <laughs> the Jesuits are behind that, that noise. You can hear that? Anyways, um, I have made a total workout video. It's about an hour long. Therefore, I'm not going to post it to YouTube because Jesus told me not to go over 15 minutes. But I will have a link for it underneath my video. I started doing it about a week ago, and already I am seeing results. Of course, I'm combining that with diet. I'm feeling better. Um, with the blood flowing through my cells, and also the Seroquel is better able to spread to all my cells and purge the yeast from my body. So um, this is uh, my um, workout video. I encourage people to follow along. I do not want to be the only beautiful person in the world or the only healthy person in the world. So if you think you're getting a little flabby or out of shape, please join with us and we will work out together. And we'll all get beautiful and healthy together. And um, this is to honor those at the Boston Marathon. And it's also at my website. There will be a link for that below this video. I don't like to go outside to exercise because one of Zach Knight's obsessed followers is always around to hound me. So I work out indoors. The link to my web page that has the videos below this video. I will also have another link that will just take you straight to the exercise video. And Carolyn's facial fitness is the facelift exercise video. So when I say total workout, I'm talking about from head on down. I, I focus on my weak areas, <laughs> like my waistline is my weak area. So. Uh, Jesus likes me to make a video at least once a week, and sometimes I have events to report on, and I'm sure things have been happening this past week, but I like to wait until my men contact me to report on them so that I will report accurately. I can't trust everything that I hear brain to brain. I haven't heard from them since in about a week, so when I hear from them, I will report. Uh, in the meanwhile, I'm busy at work on my next book, and I've decided to make some videos for writers. For my fellow writers out there where I will discuss how I create my books. Um, get this straight. How I create my books and um, after this video I'm going to go work out. That's why I'm dressed up like this. Try to inspire us all to get exercise and get healthy. Um, another thing, when you're exercising, if you're running out of breath to the point where you can't talk, you need to stop. Okay, So don't follow me to the point where you get yourself sick. Um, um, for those who admire my writings, you may find this interesting. I'm currently working on a non-fiction novel using Jesus Christ as the narrator, and I'm covering all significant events in my life in which he has played a significant role. The narrator or the one who's telling is the one who tells the story, and uh, that means when you read the book, you will view the story filtered through the eyes and ears of the narrator, and my narrator is Jesus. <laughs> In, in Silver Skies and in the book I'm writing right now. The problem with having Jesus as the narrator is that people cannot relate to him because he's God. You know, he's perfect and we are not. So I've brought him down to earth and made him real personable. Jesus should like this because this is how he really is with, with me and Terrence and Brent when he shows up. He's not an obvious narrator in my book, but perhaps the best way to describe him as the narrator is that he's the book's voice. His attitude permeates the pages and how the story is described. Though Jesus is narrator in both Silver Skies and the current book that I'm right working on, he's quite invisible and his presence as narrator is more like the story's tone or voice. In Silver Skies, at the end, the Jesus narrator breaks out of his silence and goes into extensive dialogue with the main character. <clears throat> However, my books are not inspired writings like the Bible, and even my current version of Silver Skies has a typo on page 375. Check out the quote at the top for Revelation 9-11. Jesus did this on purpose so that people would not worship my writings like the Bible, and you know, those who are my fans and who consider me a prophet. And I am a prophet. Jesus told me I am, but I'm not. My writings are not infallible like the Bible, so I wouldn't want people to think that. Um, so, though my novel Silver Skies is a prophecy, which is how Jesus described it, it's not divinely inspired or God-breathed writings like the Bible. 
Basically, I'm using multiple points of view, combining sections told in first person point of view, and that would be like, I felt so scared when I saw her, then I realized that's her first person point of view. Um, and then I also have sections in unlimited point of view, which would be like this. She didn't realize it, but she was dealing with a clone and not the real person. And that is what I would call um, the unlimited point of view. In unlimited, the third person narrator who knows the whole story is telling the story. And if he chooses to do so, he can reveal to the reader what the character does not know. So in unlimited point of view, the author is writing in grammatical third person and and he moves freely inside and outside of the character's head. I was going to make my book all unlimited, but there are some sections of the story that are best told in first person where I really want the reader to get inside the character and know what the character is feeling, thinking, dreaming, etc. The technique that I'm using in my current book uh, is more advanced, or the techniques, plural, than the techniques that I used in Silver Skies. I was scared to be too experimental in Silver Skies because that was my first book. Though for a first book, Silver Skies was daring because uh, writing an unlimited point of view is quite difficult to do well in a first book. When I wrote Silver Skies, I didn't know who I was and I felt somewhat guilty for loving somebody more than my spouse. So that book centered on what obsessed me in my 30s and 40s. It was a search for true love and for who I needed to be. And I needed some resolution in these areas. So Silver Skies is a character story with characters searching for true love and wondering what roles they should play as lovers. An example of a character story would be the movie Out of Africa with Meryl Streep. The whole story is a true story about Karen Blixen, who was searching for who she needed to be, and also searching for love. And the movie is about how and why she became the writer Isaac Dinesen. And so a character story is about a person trying to change their role in life. It begins at the point when the main character finds his present situation intolerable and sets out to change. It ends when the character either finds a new role willingly returns to the old one or despairs of improving his lot. Silver Skies is a character story. I've pretty much found my role as a lover now and, I'm pretty, and I pretty much know who I am. So in my 50s my interests and obsessions have changed. Now my obsession is to assist Jesus Christ in correcting the disorder that plagues planet Earth, especially in dealing with the Jesuit order who I feel represents Satan and is therefore a great disorder in this world. And my current book is not a character story, though it may have character stories as subplots. It's an event story told in a nonfiction novel format. In an event story, events are the central concern, and it's, uh, it's concerned with a world that is somehow out of order called imbalance, injustice, breakdown, evil decay, disease, and the story is about the effort to restore the old order or establish a new one. The event story begins when the main characters become involved in the effort to heal the world's disease and ends when they either accomplish their goal or utterly fail to do so. Examples of event stories are The Thorn Birds by Colleen McCullough, in which the disorders of family bend on sacrificing life's true values for superficial things like ambition. The disorder is cured when Justine breaks her family out of this mold of unnecessary sacrifice and marries the man she loves rather than continuing on at Drogheda as an unnecessary sacrifice to atone for the death of her brother. Or another event story would be like Exodus by Leon Uris, a story about the disorder of anti-Semitism and the Jews' desire to find respectability and honor as a nation and as a people, which they find with the birth of the Israeli nation. And they're going to really find it when Jesus comes back and makes the Jewish nation the lead nation over the entire earth, which would be a fulfillment of biblical prophecy. <clears throat> My book will be exploring and dealing with the disorder of the Jesuit order and of Satan's temporary rule over planet earth. Satan is the prince of this world, and God has given him temporary reign over the earth over the earth, see Ephesians 2, 2, 1 John 5, 19, John 14, 30. To explore this dis disorder, I will use the characters most involved with the disorder on both sides of the disorder. And I've chosen to use Jesuit Rule 13 
as one of my character main characters in my present book to view the disorder from the inside. Other main characters will be myself, Brent Spiner, and Vladimir Putin. I will change most names of the main characters to fictional names. I'm currently in chapter three of my first draft. I'm patterning much of my format after the novel Exodus, which has many nonfiction subplots. My attempts to cure the world of the disorder of the Jesuit order actually started, though I didn't know it at the time, when Brent Spiner, Brent Spiner first came into my life in 1990. So I will be condensing a lot of events in this book covering from 1990 until now. This requires unlimited point of view or else the book would be the size of an encyclopedia. To be a good storyteller, I am only including events in this book that are related to the theme which revolves around victims of cruelty or misfortune in which great lovers are attacked by an evil organization that strives to supplant great love with, with a lust for ambition and power. This disorder will be fully explored in my book. This book is about injustice which needs to be made right, whereas Silver Sky's primary focus was on the lovers themselves who needed to get out of intolerable situations but weren't sure how to go about it. My current book is about victims of a disorder who suffer serious injustices because of an organization, that's the Jesuit order, obsessed with power and greed, and the need for these victims to get justice. I will report on the progress that I'm making with this book occasionally to let you know where I'm at with my book. I don't expect to finish the book this year, 